So this is how the story ends. On July 4th, 2020, the young girl puts a rope around her neck to end her life. No last words, no notes. And just when she is about to kick the stool, she suddenly felt a bit peckish. She suddenly craved the taste and the smell of stinky tofu. Grace thought, yes, she must taste stinky tofu one last time, just before she kills herself, before she hangs herself like a slab of meat. Peckish? Peckish? Can you stop already? People think someone's getting killed. And yeah, I mean, if you don't know what the word means, I could explain it to you. According to Merriam-Webster, it is a very British way to indicate that you are hungry. Oh, I know what the word means. What the heck is that stinky tofu part? Well, I mean, if you're about to die and there are only so many things you could do before you hang yourself, and if you happen to like stinky tofu... You know that's not what happened. We're not promoting Taiwanese food. I never said we were. Try again. This is how the story really ends. In a bathtub with a tub of hot water that would soon be colored red. Old fashioned doll. But just when she was about to bleed and die painfully, her thoughts suddenly jumped to the washing machine she just turned on. She forgot that she had started the wash cycle under her mother's order before she prepared to stab herself to death. And she began to worry. What if her parents weren't back in time to dry the clothes? More importantly, did she accidentally put her father's white shirts with the colored ones? Her dad specifically told her dad- Just fucking stop. Oh my fucking... Did I miss something? Did I do something wrong? Am I being punished? No. Why? I think you're screwing with me. You're not my type. And no. I was just thinking, if she was to kill herself, there's always this possibility If that you she... don't want to write this, just say it to my face. No. Well, yes, 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 I do. I really want to write about our recently deceased friend, especially as we are about to use her death to- do To do the right thing! To set the record straight! To properly remember and honor her! <laughs> no! No sarcasm! No! You know exactly why I asked you to do this, and you agree to it. I agree on why we should do this, not how we do this. <sighs> no one's gonna read this if we do it your way. Yeah, I heard that the first time. What was it? Too flat, full of boring facts? We're living in the 21st century. And this matters to the article in what way? It means if we don't grab people's attention with the first few lines. If your title and opening aren't interesting enough, if you don't make it sound like a story, they look away. They will leave the website or they will scroll down and continue to look at other posts. I'm sorry, but this is the world we live in now. I'm beginning to wonder if there's any difference between journalism and the entertainment industry. What did I just say? This is manipulation. We guilt our readers or bait them with gruesome scenes, but the fact is we don't know exactly what was on her mind before she died. Slut, whore, homewrecker, 
ignorant and selfish bitch. Attention starving cunt. Shall I continue? Shut it. I know what they wrote. But Christ, Eugene. Her sister was the one who found her body. She was 15 and she was forced to be the adult to call the ambulance and comfort her parents. But those reporters didn't give a shit. They didn't know her like we did. And now, what the fuck are we doing? We're doing literally the same thing. We're prying into her family life and using her death. We are using this chance to set things straight, to slap people in the face. Those so-called Grace's friends on the papers and TV, they don't care about her. They just used Grace for their own 15 minutes of fame. We're going to tell the truth. We're going to tell every single person who called her a whore to go fuck themselves. And we're going to let everyone know how long these people have been abusing the system. And we're going to... We're going to stop another life from perishing like this. Why Grace killed herself. And that son of a... That man needs to know there's blood on his hands. Do we know? What? Know why she killed herself. <sighs> she didn't leave a note. She refused to talk to anyone for a long time. We didn't know she had schizophrenia. We didn't know her parents were about to split. We didn't even know her boyfriend. Her ex-boyfriend was abusing her. What do we really know about her? If you want out, you're out. I won't force you to do things you don't want to. I want to do this, I do. Then stop messing around. You said she refused to talk to anyone. You are wrong. She talked to us, to me and you. She told us what happened and we missed the signs again and again. It's too late for her. But it's not for others. We, we already failed her once. I'm not failing again. I'm having an online class in about five minutes. It ends at four. Send me the draft then. I'll see you later. No, 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 I'm not lying. This is true. This is really how it ended. Mm -hmm. So he was above me, and right after he did his business, he was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You can't be serious. Unfortunately, I am. I'm not shitting you. Oh. And it gets worse. He then just rolled over, took out the condom, and went to sleep. Oh, you no. Who are you? I was like, hello? And he began snoring. Oh, yeah. Man, um, 
Is this him? Oh is that God. Charles? Oh, fuck Do you recognize? <laughs> By the way, he texted me last week. Mm-hmm. Wanna bang again? No. And I, no. I asked him if he's worried about COVID. <laughs> And he said, if it makes me feel better, he could wear a condom and a raincoat. No, <laughs> now that's <Hey>. disgusting. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was my first guy. And now it's your turn, sweeties. I'm not telling you about my first time. Oh, Sonny. Don't call me dead. Fuck <laughs> off. Oh, fine. How about you, Grace? Me? Oh, yeah. What was your first time like? Oh, she's trying to use you as a shield. You're such a coward. Wait, wait, listen, if Grace tells us hers, then I'll tell you mine. You could have just gone first. Oh, but then you just changed the subject. Yeah. You almost never tell us about your relationships and stuff like that. That's well, not fair. Except the toxic douchebag. Jason. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, see, it's always me and Sonia sharing our stories. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you change the subject right after that. Mm-mm. But I'm not telling you my story until Grace does it first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stop. I'm not no saying one. anything. Come on. It's time. We're like, why not saying get over no, it? Exactly. No, we have to know no, everything about it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Grace, go oh. on. My first time like, you know, was <laughs> with our cram school teacher. What? When we were 14, the math teacher, Michael, remember him? Everyone loved him. He was good looking and passionate. He always tried his best to help us study. It happened one day when the two of you had left. My parents were having a huge fight that day. That's why they hadn't come to pick me up. That's why I was left with him. At the time, I thought I was the luckiest. Why wouldn't I? Every girl was hoping to spend more time with him. Alone. When we were alone, he asked me to take off my uniform. My skirt, my jacket, my shirt, and my bra. I never believed he'd do anything wrong. I was so afraid to ruin my relationship with him. What was the point in saying no? The door was locked and everyone was gone. And then he assaulted me. He told me I was a good girl, I was beautiful and smart. He told me I wanted to do this since the day he met me. He said he loved me. And when I was old enough, he married me. Don't touch me. He... Fuck. He... I mean, at the time, he... And a daughter who is more than one year younger than us. Did you? Shit. That night after your parents came, did you? No one knows except you guys. When I got home that day, I ran straight into the bathroom and washed and scrubbed myself over and over again until I couldn't feel his touch. And you know he got away with it, of course, because he's still there. Christ. I confronted him when I got older and strong enough. 
He then kneeled before me and apologized. He said he didn't know what he was thinking at that time and begged for my forgiveness to have mercy on his family. Of course I didn't forgive him. Mm-hmm.